Yeah, welcome to Seismic Radio, and we are looking at a series, and following the New Testament, the series is called Deception in the Church. Deception in the Church. Um, and so what we are doing in this series is just going through the New Testament and going, looking at each book and seeing you now what references are there in each book it, about deception in the church. So, so far we've been looking at Matthew, we've been looking at Mark, the Gospel according to Luke, and now we're looking at John as well. Um, very important to say when John was written, John was written most likely after the destruction of the temple, roughly about 100 AD, that's what uh, scholars believe when the Gospel according to John was, was written. Um, the the gospel itself seems to be very anti-Semitic, so you get a lot of references, you know, that the Jews did this and that, and bearing in mind that John was a Jew himself, so the author was a Jew, so it's not like uh, somebody, uh, you know, talking about some other people, but he was really part of, of that people, and initially uh, Christianity and Judaism was seen to be, you know, together, so uh, Christianity was just, uh, or, you know, uh, the the... Uh, how to say it. Christianity was the fulfillment of Judaism. That's the way it was seen initially. So people wouldn't consider themselves to be a separate group uh, when, once they came to Christ, but they would consider themselves still to be Jews. Only later, when a lot of pagans and Gentiles uh, adopted Christianity, but were not told to uh, adhere to the law of Moses, is when we saw a split and, and suddenly Christianity became a, a group which was standing in its own right. <clears throat> After the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple, the whole link to the nation of Israel and the na to, to Judaism as such more or less disappeared and vanished. And, uh, and again, we, when we read the Gospel according to John, we have to, to bear this in mind, you know, the context it was written in. Now, uh, we talked a lot about the Pharisees, the leaven, you know, the Sadducees, the scribes, all the stuff they were doing, you know, the way they were opposing Christ. <clears throat> when we talk about deception in the church as well, and we look at the Gospels, we, we always have to bear in mind that the church wasn't born as yet. Um, when we look at, um, the, at, at, within a biblical context, the church was born at Pentecost. Uh, and, and so really, uh, it only started after, uh, you know, Acts chapter, I think chapter 2 it is, um, so beginning of Acts, we, we start to see the church in operation. Um, and so at the time when Jesus was here, it was still part of the Old Testament, the Old Testament being fulfilled in Christ's death on the cross, and then the new covenant being established um, you know, at Pentecost, 40 days after Jesus resurrected. So um, let's have a look. Um, we are looking at chapter 10 and it talks about the true shepherd and it talks about the thieving shepherd. So some time ago I did a talk on the thieving shepherds, um, people who don't go in through the gate, but they uh, climb in or they get in through some other, me other means. They proclaim to be or profess to be a shepherd and they lead some people astray. Okay, let's have a look at the text and then we'll comment it a little bit. And, and that's, that's all what we do with the Gospel of John. So we're not going to cover the whole Pharisee, Sadducee, scribe issue. We've done this before, but we're just going to look at uh, the shepherd issue. You know, who is a good shepherd and, and what's happening with the, the thieving shepherds. Okay, it's in uh, the Gospel according to John, chapter 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his vo voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke, spoke to them. And Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door, and... Um, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but uh, the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and I will go in and out and find pasture. And Sorry, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pa pasture. Uh, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for a sheep, but a hireling, 
He who is not a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Uh, the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also must I bring, I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Therefore there was a division again amongst the Jews, among the Jews because of these sayings. And many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Yeah. Okay. Right, let's go back to the text. You know, Jesus is a true shepherd. And strictly speaking, when we, when we look at the scripture, Jesus says that the guys or the people who have come before him, yeah, they are thieves and robbers. Okay, and we have to really do a little bit of interpretation if we want to relate this to deception in the church today. Um, and bear with me, um, and, and, and we'll quickly look at this and sort of interpret it slightly differently. I'm sure it's within the context of the scripture uh, doing it this way. But strictly speaking, and that's the reason why I pointed out, uh, Jesus talks about people who have come before him, you know, claiming to be something big, but they weren't. Okay, um, let's have a look. So... The um, you need to go in by the gate, and then Jesus says to them, um, um, that he is the door, and if anyone enters through Jesus, he will be saved, and he will go in and find pasture, 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 pasture yeah. Uh, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy, yeah? but Jesus has come so that they've got life abundantly. Okay, so. The key, there are a couple of keys here. One of the keys is that Jesus is the door through whom we need to go in. And, um, but um, uh, then we, we read in verse 10, uh, in chapter 10, verse 1, that uh, the thief and the robber climbs up some other way. Yeah? So he goes into the sheepfold and he gets in some other way. And he's a thief and a robber. And, and what we find is, um, and, and um, it's a little bit of interpretation, it's a little bit sort of taking it beyond its context, um, but I think it's pointing to those. It's the same thing as, you know, we've seen in the parable of the wheat and the tares, that there are people who are in amongst the flock of sheep who are not part of the flock. Yeah. We've got the, uh, in Matthew, Jesus talks about wolf in wolves in sheep clothing, uh, we have got the tares, which are scattered in between the good seed. Yeah? So we've got the wheat, which is a good seed, and then we've got the tares, you know, the, the bud plants, you know, who take up all the nutrients but are not part of the good seed. And, um, and we've got, we've got these, this imagery here. So I'm going to take it one step further. And backed by those imagery and by those concepts, I'll say there are people who are not coming into the sheep pen through the gate, through the door, through... Uh, Jesus Christ. They're not coming through a point of total surrender to Jesus Christ and accepting the the lordship of Jesus Christ upon their lives, but they climb over the wall. Yeah. They get in some other way and uh, they avoid Jesus. They avoid the reality of Jesus Christ. They may talk the talk, they may even walk the walk to some extent, but, but something is missing because they haven't been born again, they haven't been born from above, and um, they haven't got a new nature. They are still, you know, people on the pretense uh, uh, cause, but uh, but they're not real. They are fake Christians. Yeah. And so these people, they climb over the wall, and then uh, what we see here in these verses in verse um, uh, 10, that they have come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yeah. And um, th there's a purpose for them. Some of them have been planted by the devil. Some of them, they, they're just looking for opportunity, like a wolf. You know, when he goes into, you know, in amongst the sheep, he looks for opportunity to catch a sheep which is uh, slow, you know, or doesn't run away fast enough, or it's just there and he can get hold of it. And he tries to kill it and to uh, eat it, to live off the sheep's substance. And that's what these people are doing as well. 
So we shouldn't be surprised uh, when we go into our churches and we go into Bible-believing churches and we find that not everything is the way we think it should be, but we find that there are a lot of people, or maybe even in the leadership, that there are a lot of people there who have not come in through the gate. They have not come in, come in through the door. They have not come in through Jesus Christ, but they climbed over the wall of the sheep pen and um, some other way, you know, other way through than through Jesus. And they are suddenly right amongst us. And uh, what are they trying to do? They are dangerous for us. They are trying to destroy us. They're trying to steal from us. They're trying to uh, eventually kill us. Um, nevertheless, we need to be of good cheer. You know, Jesus says that, uh, you know, um, his sheep will hear his voice. He will look after them. He is a good shepherd. And, uh, and there is great comfort in those uh, scriptures as well. Even though the enemy tries to destroy us, We've got protection, you know, given to us by God. Um, should we worry? Should we not worry? The answer is yes, of course. You know, we should open our eyes. We should listen to the shepherd. We should listen to Jesus and not listen to a stranger, to somebody who gives us a different message than the one Jesus Christ has given us in his word. And, uh, and again, you know, I look at the Christian um, media. I look at Christians... Um, uh, sort of at, at churches which are out there and I see that that a lot of them are preaching something else it's a different voice it's not the voice of Jesus you can hear through them but it's a voice of uh, worldliness it's a it's a voice of humanism the voice of secularism the voice of uh, something else I mean there are a lot of things as well uh, where the Bible very clearly says this is wrong the world very clearly says no it's right and then you get the church, and the church says, we need to go with the times, you know, if all the people think it's right, then we have to agree with them, and we are all about love, and about being nice, and kind, and good, and the church suddenly says, oh yeah, it's right, okay, or some, some part, some sectors of the church. Um, it's, uh, partly it's a joke. I went to a Greenbelt festival uh, a few years ago, um, and it's, um, it's sort of a strange festival. I've heard about it, you know, uh, in the 80s, and it was supposed to be really good. And, uh, you know, people were very progressive. And it sort of the Jesus people time was, was still around where people were just experiencing Christ and so on. And uh, the whole festival has moved on. So it's, um, it's become very big. There were lots of people there. Um, and it's all a little, little bit sort of, uh, I would call it airy-fairy, you know, sort of very strange, very weird kind of festival. Anyway, I got a ticket for free, so I went there, thought, you know, it doesn't hurt to check it out. And all I saw was just like um, um, a theistic humanism. That's, I think, the best way to, to write it. They all believed in, in God somewhere, somehow, um, but, um, but there wasn't really any emphasis uh, on the Word of God. There wasn't really any emphasis on that. A lot of artists there, all the artists there were just singing about their own problems. There wasn't any true worship of God. You had like weird meditation stuff going on, all about, you know, find yourself and do your own thing and 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 things like that. There was uh, sort of a lot of hippie-ish stuff going on. You know, there was one guy, they, they bought an old mill and they felt that, uh, you know, because they were restoring, restoring this old mill, people had to donate to them so that they could just, you know, not do a decent day's work, but just spend time uh, there and... Um, you know, build up whatever they had or something. It's really, really bizarre. Um, you couldn't buy any non-fair trade coffee. You know, if you wanted a, a, just a standard cup of coffee, it wasn't possible. Everything was fair trade. But not that I'm knocking this, you know. It's okay, you know, that these people are doing this. The problem was they proclaimed to be Christians. They proclaimed to, they profess to be Christians and they profess to, to, do, uh, to do this. But, um, but really they're missing it, you know. They're, they're totally missing it. They're missing the essence of Christianity. Uh, they celebrated a guy who, uh, you know, had given up Islam and was now an atheist, and they thought that was like a really positive step. I mean, uh, you know, whether I go to hell as an atheist or I go to hell as a, as a Muslim, I don't know. I think the, the end result is the same. So why do you celebrate anything like that? And then the worst thing was, which I saw, um, it was um, um, some guys, they were, uh, you know, openly uh, gay, homosexual, and they, um, you know, consider themselves as homosexual Christians and they were promoting a gay church. Now, I know, you know, in our day and age, that's all okay and it's, it's, it's fine. My point is, what do you do with the Bible, you know? Are you just going to rip out half the pages which are in the Bible 
get rid of them? Um, how can you twist the word of God to such an extent that that is okay? I mean, the worst thing was, I mean, I don't have anything against these guys on a personal level, but, um, but don't come to me and say, you know, call yourself Christian based on what the Bible says. Yeah, you may call yourself, I don't know what, you know, call yourself anything and do your own religious stuff. That's fair. That's not a problem. But don't call yourself Christian. Don't call yourself um, Christian, Bible-believing Christian, and then come up with a nonsense like that. You know, when the Bible clearly says that people like that do not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. Same thing with greedy people or, uh, you know, just to make the point so it's not, you know, discrimination or whatever. The Bible talks about greedy people, talks about uh, pedophilia, yeah, that this is the same thing, puts it all in the same boat. Uh, it talks about uh, thieves, talks about you know people who pursue witchcraft. These guys, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They're excluded, you know. And uh, you know people may have indulged in things like that, and they may be sorry for doing this, and they they may be aiming to live the way God wants them to live, and they fall and falter every now and then. It's a different story, but but if I profess to be a thief or I profess, you know, I'm greedy and I'm proud of it and I make as much money as I can and I'm just going to sit on the money and I'm not going to do anything with this. It's in the same boat, yeah. The church of the greedy people is is as much a nonsense as, um, as a gay church or a church of uh, witches or whatever. Uh, if, if it is a Christian church, that is. Now, if they do their own thing, that's okay. They can play religion. The end result is going to be the same, you know, the same with the atheist and, and the other guys. But, um, but the point is um, that, that people are missing it and that shepherds have come in some other way. They've gone over the wall. They've climbed over the wall. They haven't come, come in through Jesus Christ. If they had come in through Jesus Christ, they would, you know, speak the words of Christ. And the words of Christ, they're not just all lovey-dovey. Some of them are quite serious. Some of them are so serious that they are scary. And we mentioned this in the first talk when we looked at Matthew, and we looked at Matthew, I think it's chapter 6 or 7, where it says that many will come in, in that day to me and say, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this and that and the other? And he'll say, I never knew you. And these are the people who have come in over the wall. They climbed in over the wall, and they've been leading other, other people astray. Because I can go further, you know. People, Jesus said in one instance that looking at children, you know, that, that, that people who seduce children and lead them away from God, yeah, that it would be better for them to have a millstone uh, hung around their neck and being drowned into the depth of the sea. And this is Jesus who is saying this. It's not, you know, some horrendous despot or something, but it's Jesus who is saying this. And, and I think people very often, they, they, they are very selective in their hearing. Yeah? Um, God is all about love, but he's also about righteousness. And they forget this inconvenient truth about righteousness. And we are required to seek God's righteousness in our lives, whatever this may entail. Uh, and it sometimes it's not very pleasant because we are all rotten sinners and we, have all, you know, we are all making mistakes you know, worthy of hell. And, uh, and I'm not knocking one community. Uh, I'm talking to myself as well. I've done plenty of mistakes which are worthy of hellfire. But all I can do is I can rely on the grace of God and I can rely on the forgiveness of God and I can rely on um, my repentance being accepted before God for the stuff I've done. You know? And so it's important to, um, to, you know, to, to bear this in mind and to really look at this stuff and to um, you know, be focused on, 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 on what the Bible is really saying. What is Jesus saying? Uh, what is Jesus saying? And, and, and we need to listen to his voice. We don't need to listen to voices, you know, of some guys dressed in pink who are trying to tell us um, that it's okay to do that. You know? It's okay to leave your wife and your kids and to, uh, you know, after umpteen years of marriage and to hook up with another bloke. Uh, and the answer is not. You know? It's not okay to leave your wife. It's not okay to leave your kids. It's not okay to um, uh, to to engage in something like that if if you call yourself a Christian. Uh, okay, and, and again, you know, we, we get all the hate hate speech stuff and and so on. Uh, it's not hate speech if you are. Um, mm, let's say if you are working for a society, you know, um, 
s rescue the whales or something you know it's not okay to go on a, a japanese uh, trawler to uh to kill a whale yeah to go out in the seas to kill a whale and to eat it afterwards and yet the next day you're out there and you're professing to belong to to greenpeace or whatever who try to stop this there's a conflict of interest and it's the same there as well there's a conflict of interest you cannot profess to belong to a group of people who will reject a certain lifestyle and yet you actively pursue it actively that's the thing i mean you, and um and that's that's a problem that's a problem i'm talking about here so we need to um bear this in mind yeah you know, and we need to look out for that as well there are a lot of voices and and greenbelt for me it was one really horrendous experience where i thought this is just christianity gone wrong really badly wrong and um a lot of people who were there i thought they've just lost the plot yeah completely and utterly lost the plot that wasn't christianity it was something else it was modern humanism it was middle class airy fairy bloody blast stuff um but it wasn't you know jesus you are my lord and i'm going to follow you and uh, and i want you to take over my life that wasn't that wasn't greenbelt not from what i've seen you know? you may um if you've been there and you're listening you may have got a different experience and that's okay but um but really and and i'm going to close on this as well what we really need to do is we need to be decided in our hearts we need to listen to the right shepherd we need to listen to jesus christ and we need to make sure that we are not listening to false shepherds and there are plenty of them around these days plenty you know they're all over the place people who tell you something else who, who have got some sort of side truth or some some truth which is not really revealed in the bible but they feel because you know they've got special revelation from god they've got this truth and they need to push it upon you uh that's not kingdom of god that's not jesus christ that's something else yeah that's people who have climbed over the wall okay i tell you the last one and and um again i find this quite shocking and it goes all in the same direction really what i've talked about before but but it's, it's just what we are finding today all the time yeah we, we're finding this all the time um there's this one woman and her name is is vicky beeching yeah and uh and is this like in you know whatever is happening in society and and you know obama is pushing it and a lot of other people are pushing it as well you know the, the whole lbg lbgt agenda anyway this woman she was in the church for many many years she has decided that uh it's time for her to uh, out herself and she said look i'm you know she's gay and that's what she um um she is now and she has told the world now it's all out and um and it's a problem and then she was really upset because uh, she has made her money singing christian songs and worship songs all over and she feels that the churches are now no longer listening to her and she's losing all her revenue and all the money she has needless to say she's got a job with some um a news outlets and uh, she's all over and then obviously the the big thing she makes as well she's got like a phd in something or another and um and she feels that you know she should be part of the christian community and she should you know educate churches that this is all okay um anyway there's um i've seen this i followed this in the news and it's, it's actually it's been quite disturbing to me it's been quite disturbing you know the way she's going and uh, and the way it's it's all been been addressed um the secular media media obviously has launched has uh, launched onto it and they um you know get some christians so they make look really stupid and then they get this a uh, glamorous woman um you know good looking glamorous woman very uh eloquent very sophisticated making up points and uh, you know if you don't know the bible you would say yeah she's totally right she's perfectly right and that's all fine and so on you know your bible and you know it's not it's not right you know whatever she's saying is not right it's not it's not the voice of jesus it's not the voice of the bible but it's something else um um and um, and anyway her expressed aim was to stay within evangelical churches and to push the agenda the disturbing thing is um she finds ear with a lot of people and a lot of people are adopting uh the voice of beaching rather than the voice of christ and um and it's a problem it's a big problem um jennifer nap was another one she uh, she made a public statement and she said she doesn't care you know if if it's such a big thing to god then god should strike her that's what she said yeah um 
And again, I find this very disturbing. You know, there's just no sense of humility. There's just a, a phenomenal amount of arrogance, and uh, um, and I'm not quite sure what's going wrong with these people. But it's 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 a huge problem. It's a huge problem. Talking about all these things, you know, um, we need to be careful not to be judgmental in the sense that uh, we just hover on this issue. The moment is very easy because it's all over the place. Uh, you hear this in the news, um, you, you get the whole uh, the marriage thing and, and everything else. And it's it's all over. It's like in Europe, it's in, in America. It's um, it's quite quite serious, I think, what's, what's going on in the world right now. But um, and so it's probably worthwhile, or we have to mention it, we have to make a statement as, as Christians on this issue. Now, the point I'm saying is there are a lot of voices out there. And there are a lot of voices by people who try to lead other people to the truth but these voices they are not the voices of christ they are voices which are different they are voices of people who have not entered through the door but they've entered over the wall and they are there to kill and to destroy um just to make the point if uh, if people listen if you listen to a deceiver and you believe a lie the lie is going to impact your life and the lie is going to make you know generate a lot of problems in your life and um and this lie is going to permeate. It's going to go throughout your whole life, and it's going to, you know, dampen your relationship with God. I'm not saying you lose your salvation. I'm not saying uh, that um, you are going to be in, in major trouble. But it's it's going to be it's going to be something which is which is not good, and it's going to generate and create a lot of problems. So it's important, you know, to listen to the shepherd and to listen to the right voice, to listen to the voice of God. And to to heed his word, um, you know, in in all aspects in our lives, and not just to listen what is most convenient, to listen to the convenient truth. The temptation is there very very strongly, and I'm probably the easiest one to to get by. You know, if anything makes life easier, or you you don't have any problems, you don't have any issues, it's our natural inclination to just go that way and and just. You know, leave the rest alone. You know, don't look for conflict, avoid conflict. Sometimes it's unavoidable, and it, it is just there. So if you uh, follow Jesus, sometimes you inevitably upset other people in the way you think, the way you live, and in the way you act. Even though you think, live, and act in love, but you also embrace righteousness, and that's sometimes the upsetting part when you tell people the truth, and or you you know publicly tell the truth, and people get upset about it. Okay, my friends, what, uh, what is the answer here? Watch out, you know, watch out for people within the church. Watch out for people who have climbed over the wall, who haven't come in through the gate. Um, again, I'm going to go back to Matthew. Matthew says, you will recognize them by their fruits. The fruits are not the number of people who get saved, which is sometimes mistakenly seen, or signs and wonders. On the contrary, a lot of people who commit signs and wonders or who do signs and wonders, one day they will stand before Christ. And Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Yeah. So it's quite shocking. Yeah. But the fruits are the fruits of the Spirit. And we can read this up in Galatians. And uh, it talks about, you know, love, perseverance, long-suffering. It talks about good stuff, you know, good qualities, good character, which is produced in those people. Yeah. People who are sacrificial, who are kind, who are good. Not people who are greedy, you know, who don't care about others, who just care about themselves, who are um, self-obsessed, you know looking for status, looking for distinction, looking for, for worship so that they'll be worshipped themselves. And there are a lot of these people in the church, yeah? and a lot of people there right up the, uh, the hierarchy. And, um, and yet when we look at them, all we, need, all we can see is that these are people who have climbed in over the wall. They, they don't know Jesus. They, have, they haven't gone in through the door. Okay, I'll leave it at this point. We have been looking at the four Gospels now. We've been looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and now at John. And in every book, we have found some sort of warning, you know, about false teachers, about deception in the church, um, kind of, yeah, uh, bearing in mind that everything was spoken into context. And when we look at the Gospels, the church as such wasn't around us yet. So it only came later with Pentecost in the book of Acts. But, but there are sort of a lot of talks about, you know, stuff which is not going right, which is going wrong, religious people taking over and squeezing out the life the Holy Spirit tries to inject into you. 
and and suffocating it with rules and regulations and with re religiosity. You know? Now, Christianity, don't get me wrong, it's not a religion, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Christianity is not a set of rules, but it's discipleship. It's um, looking up to the master, looking up to the shepherd, and trying to follow our shepherd, listening to his voice, you know, trying to find him, you know, spend time with him, worship him, uh, venerate him, you know, pay respect to him, spend some time with him. I think that's a biggie, you know, spend some time with Jesus, spend some time with God. That's a biggie in your life. And that's really what, um, what, um, what Christianity is all about. It's not a, not a religion. It's not about, you know, here are your 20 rules, 10 rules, 50 rules, 1,000 rules or whatever. Um, follow them and you'll be okay. Nothing to do with that at all. Nothing to do with that. It's about, you know, allowing God into your life and, you know, looking at your rotten life and allowing God to turn it into something noble, into something nice, into something beautiful, and into something with uh, a very high standing character. Um, Okay, so I'm going to leave it at this. I'll uh, wish you a great day. God bless. And uh, I hope you uh, don't get too upset about some of the statements I make. Um, ultimately, the Bible makes them. You know, I am standing myself behind the word of God. And, um, and um, if it's not good, it's a decision you have to make in your mind. All I want to tell you is, and I'm going to leave on this point, is that God is all about love and he's all about righteousness. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, whether you're gay, straight, or whatever you are, whether you are greedy, whether you are kind, whether you are, um, you know, old, young, you are uh, whatever race you are, whatever it is, yeah, it doesn't matter, all of us. And that's what the Bible says, we fall short before God, we fall short of the glory of God. We, we don't have enough to come to God and say, look at us, you know, you should be proud of us. We are so good, you know, so good people. It doesn't work like that. All of us, you know, we have, we've missed it. We've missed it badly. Um, the worst thing is if we do wrong and we persist in doing wrong and we, you know, try to tell God that us doing wrong is really okay. That's a worst thing and that's really what we need to take, you know, what we need to get away from. Focus on Jesus Christ, you know, allow the Holy Spirit in your life and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of unrighteousness, of sin, and to lead you into truth about Jesus Christ. And uh, and that is very important. And then, you know, move on with your life and do the right thing. Pursue the good stuff and, and get rid of the, you know, the, the stuff that's less good, that's not ideal, that's not good. You know, the stuff which doesn't really, you know, promote your life or progress your life, but really destroys your life. Okay, God bless and bye-bye from Michael here at Seismic Radio. I hope you've had a um, good day or you will have a good day or a good evening depending on what time you are listening to this. God bless and bye-bye from Michael here at Seismic Radio.